I just completed a transmission power drain on my 560SL, and this is the unit I used to do it. I don't believe in flushes. I'm not going to call this a flush. You know, if you use a pressure flush, uh, like some people report, hey, my transmission failed after I had the shop flush it out. One of the things that makes my power drain tank so universal is this fitting right here, which is the same fitting that was used <laughs> from the 60s, mid to late 60s, all the way up to mid 1990s. So this system that I'm going to show you here with this 560SL is going to perform on the W123 300D radiator. Look, this is the one you would remove on the left side and you would hook this up, tighten that down, start the engine, and you'd be pumping that old fluid while the engine's running out of the torque converter, out of the cooler here, and right into the tank. And this tank having a clear hose, you'll be able to see when the color changes knowing that you've got the old fluid completely out. I know what some of you might be thinking, hey Kent, what about an old 250 or 280 SL with that old style automatic transmission? Yes, this will work, take a look. It's not about the transmission, it's about this fitting right here that you can connect to, to the transmission cooler located at the bottom of the radiator. Isn't that amazing? 1970, and that fitting is still the same. Exactly the same as the fitting on the 1989 560SL. That's almost 30 years apart. Here are the two components that I provide in my power drain kit. I have this hose, and it's a clear hose because you want to see what's moving through the line. If it's dirty fluid and it suddenly changes to clean fluid, you're going to see it. Now, this is a special hose and fitting which is going to hook up right here just like that the other end of the clear hose is going to plug into this fitting right on top the cap now you're wondering what this golf tee is this is a vent if you're going to do this you've got to remove this golf tee and let the tank vent while you're running the engine we're going to watch to see the old fluid from the torque converter from the cooler and from those lines pump into this tank. If you're interested in doing a power drain on your old Mercedes automatic transmission, this is a setup I've come up with and I'm now offering it on my website. This will include full instructions and if you do it this way, you can be assured you'll get all that old dirty fluid out of your torque converter as well as the transmission cooler located at the bottom of the radiator. I just want to share with you a little tip. <laughs> when I'm filling these transmission spouts, you have a problem if you just shove the funnel down in there. It'll create a seal and the fluid will back up. So I just tape a little teeny zip tie. See that little zip tie? So now, when we put the funnel down in the spout, it's going to hold that off just a little bit. So as we put this leader in, it's not going to overflow. You still have to be careful and pour slowly. When you've completed the power drain, the next challenge is to get the transmission filled properly. And I think most of you know you can't check transmission fluid with the engine off. But for those of you new to this, I'm going to show the marks. I always use lint-free cloths when I'm wiping these dipsticks. So there's your marks. That mark is cold and this mark is full hot. What I do after I complete the drain is I put it right about here. It's not going to hurt to drive it for a little bit. Make sure you put a few miles on the transmission, then come back with it warm, and then you can fill it up to here. And if any case, I try to go halfway in between. You don't need to get it right to that top mark. So right now the transmission is cold and I'm going to go ahead and start it, let it run for a little bit and then we're going to check and see where the level is right now. Right now the engine's really cold, it's running at cold idle and 
you see if you look at it now you say oh no it's overfilled no you have to wipe it and when you put it in you need to put it in like here get it to within about four inches like there and then you do this down and up quick okay I'm right there see that I'm right there so I need to bring it up to right about here that's probably about a half a quart I'll go ahead and add that now and I'll double check but once again I'm gonna leave it in this range right here until I drive it for a while and get the engine real hot before I come back and do the final fill